people welcome once again to our weekly edition of politics analysis but as usual before i proceed this is the best time for you to pause the video go subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so give the video a thumbs up which helps to share the video to more people activate your notification bell to get notified of any of our new videos thank you now let's get into just in case you have been following the presidential election petition tribunal process you may have been wondering what the situation at the courts is so far. What is the likely outcome or what the likely outcome would be? Since it is widely believed that Nigerian judiciary is corrupt and may not do justice to this case before it. Some have also been of the view that it never happened before in Nigeria for a sitting president or in this case a selected president to be sacked. Yes, you may be right in thinking that way, but you must also understand that there have also never been a time in history that the courts have had this level of evidence, overwhelming evidence before it against, quote unquote, a sitting president. With the level of evidence before the court that is stacked against Paula Ahmed Tunubu, it will be a legal suicide for the judges to fail to sack Bola Ahmed Tunumbu, the consequences will be doomed for Nigeria as a country. I want you to listen to the breakdown by a well-meaning Nigerian. <clears throat> Please, I would like you to pay attention to this breakdown because that is how you gain to understand the options that are available to the judges in deciding this case. If they decide otherwise, it will be doom for Nigeria. Let me remind you just before we get into that, please, once again, it's important that you subscribe to this channel. Click the notification bell so that anytime we publish any video, you would also be notified. And in doing that, you also support the time we take in making these videos for you. I appreciate that. Thank you very much in doing that. Now, let's get into the real deal. There is no legal pathway. And take note of what I'm saying. There is no legal pathway. It's not the only way for them to do that has to be illegal. And the truth is, because of the way Tinibu's lawyers have even done the case, which after a brief you know, study that I did between yesterday and today, I now really, really realized why SBC and Tinibu's lawyers closed that case. And I think even as much as we thought that that Senator, Senator Bamidele, more than the case for them. I think we are all underestimating it in our head. He literally killed it. it now, it brought to my mind, for those of you that listen to uh, the press conference by San Levy, if you remember what he said, he said he has, he will now tell the press, he will now tell us Nigerians to go and look for the witness deposition. I don't think that witness deposition, but by the time I did some comparison to, from what he said to some things I know must have been in the witness deposition, and I said, ah, this man did damage more than we expect. So the point is that, like I was saying, I'm not really interested in how the court. Let me let me give you some people don't know this, or some people know this, that it's not really something they pay attention to. This our this petition is on three grounds. Three grounds. And you know, like a couple of prayers. Those three grounds are in a particular order. It now makes sense to me. Why Peter Abyss lawyers arrange this ground in this particular order? The first ground is that Tinubu, as of the time of the election, was not qualified to contest the election. That's the first ground, the very first ground. The other ground is that the next ground after that is that the election is invalid because of the reason of no compliance to the provisions of the Electoral Act. That's the second ground. The third ground is that the respondent that Tinubu is not duly elected by a majority of the vote. These grounds were put like this in this particular order for a reason. And that's why I said, so for, I'm saying this for people that like to pedal, rerun, 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 rerun. As in, see, rerun is really not your business, to be honest. So, if you're... If, 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 if there's any rerun, it's uh, Peter Obi and himself. <laughs> see, that, so I'm, that's what I'm coming to now. So, you know, it's really not your business. To be honest, it's not your business. In fact, if if what you are thinking too much is wrong, you are shortchanging your own self, to be honest. And I'm, and I'm saying this with all sense of responsibility. You are shortchanging your own self. 
it is in a particular order because the first thing that we expect the court to do, the first is to disqualify Tinubu. The second will now be to say, oh, did NA comply with their guideline or not? So by the time they are talking about whether NA comply with their guideline, Tinubu is already disqualified. I, I need people to understand this. So if you are brought out about other things, you are those that are wasting time and energy. By the time Tinubu is disqualified, that's when the court now says, okay, and here, now let's look, did NA comply with their guideline? If the court now decides that, oh, I may comply with no substantial compliance, the way they used to say it, that's where they cannot say, eh, eh, okay, now, from what is remaining, okay, Peter will be won the election. But before we will get to all these places now, Tinubu, they don't disqualify and think. So I need people to understand. And the truth is that Tinubu must, as a matter of must, be disqualified for these particular reasons. You know, I tried that, and I don't think what I listed is, 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 is exhaustive, to be honest. Because I discovered that for every moment I think I have seen the, the worst of what Tinubu has done, I see new things. So I, I, I've given up on trying to say, oh, this is the complete list. There's no complete list for Tinubu. It, it, is, it, as in, it keeps widening every time things is complete. So the first thing, you know, when I wrote the five, I wrote, I wrote down. I was trying to number them in order of which one is stronger, which one is but you know, I cancelled many times because I know about I know about one. I, I took it again. I said, no, this one is true. Do you know why? Each of them alone, like if it was only one of them alone, is enough to disqualify him. So just imagine that one one of these grounds, one of these cases alone, if that's the only one that Tinubu has done normally, is enough. Not to talk about when you have five that are in that height of that level. The first one, I would just say, and I will not emphasize it. It's Tinubu's NYC certificate, and I'll, I'll try to distinguish between because Peter Obi's grant on disqualification were only two, which is Shetima's double nomination and Tinubu's drug case. So the other thing is really PDP's petition. So Mr. Adam talks all the time that oh, we let's help PDP to just you know follow up their petition. Not be, we might not put the same. Of course, we certainly cannot put the same energy in the LP's case because LP's case alone, alone. Remember, like I said, I said each of these grants can disqualify Tinubu. And Peter will be asked too. In fact, for me, Peter will be asked the two strongest. Anybody can do that because we can have this back and forth that this one is strongest, this one is strongest. So that will tell you that the truth is each of them are strong. So the first is this NYC case. Tinubu's NYC discharge certificate that he presented in 1999 mentioned his name as Paula Adekunle Tinubu. Tinubu in 1999 said he did, for those of you that used to NYC, there are two things that comes out from NYC. NYC, you either have discharge certificate or exemption or exemption letter. Exemption letter. Ah, one more. Tinubu, Tinubu, see. I, when I, I don't say I'm not going to talk too much about NYC. Oh, I'm a talker. No, bro. Tinubu, Tinubu, that's criminal. As, as I'm a talker, man, the, the, the thing that increased on my head, see, the, 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 as in, I'm a talker, I'm going to make sure NYC, now I move on to the next one. But now when I talk about NYC, the thing that increased, it's a, it's a large. So Tinubu in 1999 said he did NYC, he served, and he did PPA. But if you do the NYC, they will tell you PPA is a place of primary assignment. In fact, as a matter, as a matter of fact, he mentioned where he did his PPA. Fast forward to now, Tinubu said, he's saying, he did, he did not do NYC, so he has what? Exemption letter. And if you dig further, as of the time Tinubu claimed to have been in school, there was no the, the act that permits people to have exemption letter was not existing. That is one. NYC case, one. Only one. I've not gone to two. The second one I would like to mention, right, is his dual citizenship. I know many people don't get, many people don't get this. And so people will say, oh, he's strong, he's not strong. Oh, mm-hmm. that's not my problem. So people think, when we talk about dual citizenship, we are talking about maybe the constitution, like, oh, the constitution says the president will not do That one alone. It's already a law. But I say that is not enough. Tinubu lied on his form EC9. Do you understand? So Tinubu, and naturally, everything you give to INEC, give it to INEC on that own. As in, you swear, literally, that everything I put here is true. On his EC9, Tinubu said he's only a citizen of Nigeria. So whether or not, you see that thing on Lani Bekus, as they call him, was trying to argue. That oh, is uh, this deal uh, is diplomatic? Or whether see, sorry, whether or not it's the, 
What many they ask him, have you pledged allegiance to any other country? And he ticked no. Exactly. That was so, when they brought the day they did, uh, release that thing. Go on. For you to have a passport of a country, whether it's diplomatic or whether it's whatever, oh, you shall. And so that on its own is one case. So whether constitutional you or you decide to pledge you, that is one. The next one I want to go to, permit me, is so like I was saying, sometimes go like say one. I'll, I'll go to the forge for documents. I'll go to phone documents. Because now I don't know which one is I mean, all of them sound big in my head. I don't know which one to go first. So let me go to one document. So that you will realize that even in my head, the two that will be presented at Canada the strongest. First document. Tinubu said he attended Chicago State University. Chicago State University brought documents on subpoena. And the certificate they presented, certificate, and I want people to get this. Because as three people say, oh, when you know Tinubu player were presenting documents and they presented what they call Tinubu academic records. I, I saw people panic and I say, Oh, is it doesn't mean that Tinubu really went to Chicago State University? Doesn't mean that oh, they will do the team. They will do the you know what he was talking about. Tinubu, if Tinubu did not for the certificate, what Tinubu would have presented is not academic records, it will present the original certificate. I told somebody this morning that you know what Tinubu did. It's almost as if they say somebody comes to accuse you of your work result is fake. And what you do is you go and bring your secondary school result that they give you when you write first term exam, second term exam, and that secondary school result from SS1 to SS3. You bring it and say, see now, I went to secondary school. But that's not the question. The question is your work certificate is fake. If you like me, you go to secondary school, your work certificate is fake. So whatever thing you brought as academic record, if if it's even real, if it's real. Let me put that one there. If it's real, because like Jimmy said, I don't know which I don't know how much Chicago State University will be paying for school fees to not be using one thousand to collect academic records. So and let me just put that there. If it is real, it doesn't count for anything. So Tinubu forged that certificate, and we have seen it. I mean, that one, I think that's one of like the most obvious one. I think it's not enough. There was a conflict about his gender in that certificate. Or in his, in his academic record I submitted to go to that school, his college record, there was a conflict of his gender. I think that was not enough. There was a conflict of his year of birth. I don't know whether people understand all this thing. Because well, I, mean, I need to understand when I say. Let me, if you say conflict of gender, people don't understand. Tinimbu was a woman in America, black American woman in America. That was a conflict of his. There was a woman. First transgender man when there was no transgenderism, he was the first. Then came back to Nigeria and became a man. Continue. His gender was civil for future. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I don't know what to get that. I said, no, I said, before the certificate, you can see it physically. Then even within the first certificate, he had a gender crisis. So within, within his first academic document, he had gender crisis, right? Or like Saddam said first transgender issues so sometimes i don't know how to relate to tinubu if you, if you, if you go to my tweet sometimes do we say i will say male tinubu female version tinubu male version because i need to di- distinguish between those two set of people so that people should understand that uh, that if, you know, if when we are talking now we are talking about the all these results issue we are talking about the female tinubu just understand that so there was also an issue with his year of birth conflict and all these things I just said now are within forged document number three. Remember, I came from NYC to draw citizenship to forge document. I'm going to go to number four. Number four ground of disqualification is double nomination. I don't think I, I don't know this number four number. I don't know. See, I, let me just forget which one is stronger because if I keep thinking, see double nomination, I don't think I don't know how the judicial is going to. I said this. I said this before that. The Bayelsa-Leon case. The Bayelsa-Leon case is a perfect example. Double nomination. Thank you very much. As in, as in, people, I don't know why the Jewish want to escape. Did you know why? Because if you think about it from the point of antecedents, like we said, do we know how dangerous it will be? Like, I was watching Red Media, one of the our people that, you know, summarize court case every day. I was watching this video, and he, he, he analyzed 
why Tinubu cannot survive this case. It's not really about whether the judiciary will do. I'm telling you, it's not really about whether the judiciary will do what is right or not. It's really about the antecedents that it will set if the judiciary do talk what is wrong. Think about it. So, what I want to do is that it's not really a big issue. It's really, for example, like I said, if they can pass in one NYC law, then there's a problem. It means they are giving people the right to say anything about NYC. If they pass in on dual on, on, you know, citizenship alone, then there's a problem. Because it means they have told people that you can lie on the form under oath and come later and, you know, clarify. If they pass in under fraud certificate, then there's a problem. Because it means you can tell everybody in Nigeria now that forget about school. If you can afford the certificate, forget just one. You can run for more money. That's it. Nadia Oshun will come back. Nadia Oshun will come back. So, so people should understand that the antecedent is too much. For one nomination, let me tell you the antecedent of one nomination. The, it, it is going to be a disaster in the Nigeria political scene. Because what you will start saying is that you will see somebody running for deputy governor, right? With his full chest, he will also be running for city and senate. With his foot, he will not win it. This one that I say, he will drop, he will not will drop, he will drop, he will not will drop. Mm-hmm. He, will, he will run for the two with his full chest. He will be running for deputy governor, he will be running for senate. And we, if, he wins, if he wins the two, he will not choose one. If he wins one, he will not say, okay, I give up the other one. So, that is, you should understand that is what it will mean because if they take it to court, the only thing you need to do by tenable standard, if the judiciary wants to abide by it, the only thing we need to do is to write a letter back, get that letter, send it to INEC, tell the court that I wrote the letter. I mean, did you notice on the last day that when Tinubu's lawyer wanted to present the letter that they wrote, that Shekima claimed he wrote to withdraw his senatorial decision? How many of you follow the court case? If you follow the court case, you will notice that the first thing he told the court was that there was an error. Instead of 2022, they needed, they needed to connect it to 2023. Instead of 2020, so they wrote 2023 on it, and I said it on the that that it is that error. We're not supposed to make that error when we want to, you know, if you are in 2023, in fact, I said sometimes even if you want to write your date, your date of birth, you don't write the date, you go one write 2023, before you call me and say, oh, I'm not writing this year, I'm writing the year I was born. That's what happened to whoever typed that letter. The person was so clumsy that he forgot that he was right, he was supposed to write a backdated letter. He wrote it as a 2023 letter. So that's what the court will be saying that don't worry, just write a backdated letter for the withdrawal, it's fine. So it's a very bad big accident. And, and the last one, which is where I will stop, is the big elephant in the room, the criminal for future. People, do, or, 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 let, me, let me use the word they do, civil for future. I give it to them, civil for future. And people to understand the damage that this is done. Because I think people don't get this. First of all, right? Legally speaking, if you follow <laughs> God, this that witness, Kitty Lugo, I swear. If you remember when that man said it is 982. Oh no, it's 981. Oh no, it's 982. He now settled for 982. When Salibi now said, Oh, what does he say? He now said it's money laundering and it's very kind. Salibi now said, Oh, I do not ask you that one, but you people added it. <laughs> That place, that was a big scene. Do you know why? Well, we know know the the FBI, FBI yeah. just subpoenaed uh, about a hundred, a lot of Bitcoin from Mr. Woodbury. Don't worry, it's not Mr. Woodbury that is under the, the court case. It's the Bitcoin. <laughs> <laughs> so tomorrow, now, they'll tell us that Woodbury, this thing that is happening in our eye, that it wasn't Woodbury. Maybe if I was Kayama will be old oh, that time, he'll be defending Woodbury. Then Woodbury will be president. The antecedents are way too much. Continue, my brother. Ah, see, let me just let me just round up there. I know a lot of people want to talk. I'll just round up somewhere around here. So let's see. On this on that document, that certified true copy that Chicago that the court released on Tinubu's draw case, there were two codes, USC, you know. 981. Ah, Peter, I've been reading this one. You know, they make us go to read law. We'll be scientists. We don't they read law. So then we don't go to read American law. No problem. So there are two quotes. There are two quotes in that in that in that document. There's USC 981. Which that witness that they was so dull, he went to mention USC 982. Let me tell you the difference between USC 981 and USC 982. Donald Tinubu's case was on USC 981. USC 981 is really related to civil forfeiture. But I think 
What people like Festus Kiyamu try to do to, to say to these people is they think if they call it for the fact that you say something is criminal for future and civil for future. Civil for future means crime is not attacked, it's a lie. Do you know the difference between the two of them? It's a very simple difference. The difference is that for criminal for future, you will first need to convict the person before you will take the property. And do you know who makes the choice of which one to do? It is not the client, it is not the criminal, it is the state. Do you know why the US chooses civil forfeiture? In fact, on Cornell Law School, on their website, see what they wrote. They said, they, they said, the, they said this is the source of its attractiveness to law enforcement agencies. Do you know why law enforcement agencies prefer to use civil forfeiture law? That code is because they don't want to, if you know the US, US don't like to waste resources to persecute cases. They don't want to waste resources. So they will say, okay, instead of us to be wasting our resources to show you, since what you are really after is that money in your account that you use for drug, and you are not in the US currently in Nigeria, no need to be talking about extraditing you because as of then there was no there was no bilateral relationship between Nigeria and the US to extradite people. So let's really move that one. So what they did was they used that particular side. But still on still, it is a crime. If you go and read about it, you will discover that it is a crime. I think that is no bad enough. I think that is no bad enough. The current CJN Ariola in 2014 used his hand in the case of Abacha against the federal government. Abacha so against the federal government. He used his hand to defend for future. And CJ Ariola said, defend for future talks. He said, for future is, I will just take one of the measures, he said, it's the loss of rights, privilege, or property because of a crime. See, I see. I make it up like I say, I need people to understand. So I will just end it here. Timubu judiciary, you don't have a choice. To be honest, to be honest. And as in, this is no bad. This is this is obedient thinking cap aside. Let me remove my obedient thinking cap. I'm just talking as a normal person. Bands aside. I don't know how you want to sit down, write a judgment, either on technicality or any quality. That we exonerate Tinubu from each and each, each of this and the forfeiture. Let me say, it like, where they say, each of the 36 states and the FCT. I don't know how you will sit down and exonerate Tinubu from each of these cases. And remember, everybody, all this talk about the toxins, now one gland that is the day. I never will go I make. So let me just leave it there. At that point, I hit the mic. But I want to tell people, your business is that Tinubu must be disqualified. Wow, wow, wow. That is called the Peter Obi effect. Has there ever been a time in the history of Nigeria that Nigerians have been this involved and dedicated to politics and insisting on the integrity of the person they choose as their leader, in this case, president? What you just listened to is well-meaning Nigerian and obedience, a movement that in just nine months has changed the landscape of Nigerian politics. The difference between this movement and those before it is that they know their stuff and they are not ready to give up, to move on until the right thing is done. The judiciary has the opportunity to set Nigeria straight, to put things back in order, and to put Nigeria in the path of progress or continue being in bed with the criminal politicians that we have currently running the affairs of the country. Once again, thank you very much for watching and please, please do me a favor, hit the subscribe button for that is the only way you encourage the time we spend making these videos. Once again, thank you and God bless. And with that, we come to the end of this edition of Politics Analysis. Hope you did enjoy the video. Once more, kindly subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also activate your notification bell to get notified of our new videos. Also, if you have a suggestion of videos that you'd like us to talk about and analyze, feel free to make your suggestion on the comment section and we could take your advice. Thanks for watching. Until the next edition, from me, from here, it's goodbye.